This is the ultimate tier list of movie tie-in book covers. If you're new here, I'm Tyler, AKA Tyler Talk. And on this channel, I normally design, redesign and critique logos. So if that's something you're into, then definitely subscribe. But today I want to switch things up. I kind of had this idea because I was rereading where the crawdads sing. And I remember that the movie just came out and I was looking at the movie poster and that kind of led me down this rabbit hole of remembering book covers. They changed to the movie poster or to like a version of the movie poster with the actors and stuff in it. That's what she said. And you know what? I what was that? Okay, James. I just remembered how much I hated a lot of the ones that I either read when I was younger or saw on the shelves. And so I decided to compile as many as I could and put them in a tier list. For this, I normally do S to D tier and D tier is like the flop of all of them. And I actually decided to name this one JK Rowling just because of all her recent transphobic flops recently. So without further ado, let's get into the ranking. What makes a good cover obviously is it has a good font. It has recognizable symbols um, that may or may not be like from within the book. First is American Psycho. <laughs> I actually think that they did a really good job with the movie book cover. So basically we have Christian Bale here, but you can't really see what he looks like. And it's definitely a photo, but they kind of had somebody go in and actually illustrate it after the fact and stylize it. And I think they did a really good job of making it look similar to the first one, um, but without it actually being just a headshot of someone from the movie like a lot of these are so i'm actually going to put this one in a tier okay this one is annihilation i don't know if you've seen this movie but it's actually a really good movie but i didn't realize that the initial book cover was so good like it's actually great and it has this illustration of this plant and it's kind of like about this other dimension that has this crazy plant and animal life in it and i think the Font choice plus the illustrations on it are great. The movie cover shows me literally none of that and it just looks like a bad movie poster. So I honestly think because of how much the first one slayed and how poorly the last one is, I'm gonna put this in JK Rowling tier. This one is As I Lay Dying. I don't actually love the first one and I don't like the second one. Um, but I don't think the second one necessarily flopped super hard. I actually haven't read this book. Um, so I'm going to put this one in C. Okay, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Violet, you're turning violet. I do like the original cover, but I think they did a good job of keeping the cover playful for the movie poster. Um, keeping these kind of like fun fonts in here. Um, but also being a little bit more whimsical and artistic with the choice um, instead of making it look just like a movie poster with the floating heads they actually took the time to like make some color choices some design choices so I think I'm going to put this one in B. Okay next is Cloud Atlas. The original book cover wasn't all that cool anyway but they did that thing that posters always love to do where they just put big floating head and they make a pyramid of floating heads and it just is not amazing. <laughs> and I think this movie was really cool. I'm sure the book is really good too. And I think they could have done so much more with this book version. And just because it has the floating heads, I'm gonna have to put this in the flop JK Rowling. Okay, next is Coraline. Ah, I have read this one and seen the movie. I actually love the original one. However, I also really like the movie version. I think that the silhouette with the moon and like this creepy tree hand really does evoke a sense of creepiness that the movie and the book have. And I think they did a good job of capturing the essence of the first cover, but also showing you what the movie is gonna look like. So I, I kind of wish that they took the red Coraline outline and just put that down here instead of the movie version of the logo. But overall, I like this one. I'm gonna put this one at S tier. Next is where the crawdads sing. I loved, loved, loved this book. And I love the cover. The, the color of it is just so iconic. I know it when it's on the shelf. And also I like the placement of everything like with the water at the bottom, the person in the rowboat, um, the trees, the color of the sky. 
I love this cover as a cover. The movie version, I don't necessarily love it. I don't, I do like that they try to be a little more stylized with it. Like the top of her head blends into the water, which has got the bow and like the color of the actual text is the color of the old book. So I will give it points. It's not bad, but I don't think it does the original cover much justice. So I'm gonna put this one at B. Okay, this one is called Dead Until Dark. I'm actually not really familiar with this one. It just came up when I was searching for it. I like the original cover. The movie version looks to me like it's, it looks like a bad romance novel, even though the original one doesn't look like it has anything to do with that. So I'm gonna put this one at C. Then we have Nicholas Sparks's Dear John. Nicholas Sparks has a very distinct cover style for all of his older books. Like I don't think either of them does it too much justice, but I do like the font choice for this one. Um, and I remember this like movie poster came out and it, I just had <laughs> the biggest crush on Channing Tatum. So I liked this poster a lot. So I think I'm gonna put it at B just because of the memories. Okay, Divergent. We're soaring, flying. I really don't think they did a good job of capturing the essence of the first book. It, it kind of has the same colors, but this really, was trying really hard on the CGI elements and I just don't love it. So I'm actually gonna put this one at C tier as well. All right, Ella Enchanted, the original book cover. I remember this, I never read it, but I remember it vividly being on the shelves. And this just makes it look like a horrible Disney Channel. The movie's actually pretty good, but this makes it look like a horrible <laughs> Disney Channel cover of like a companion book to a Disney Channel movie. And I really don't like this one. I think I'm gonna have to put this one at JK Rowling tier. Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close. I loved this book. I could not put it down. And the ending, if you haven't seen it or read it, is a big twist. I love the cover of the original book. I also love the cover of the movie version of the book. It really does a good job of like showing you one of the actors that's gonna be in it, but it's still this artistic close up of their face. And it also has the words extremely loud and incredibly close across the hands, just like the original book cover. And one of the main characters in the book actually has tattoos on the inside of his hands because he's deaf. One says yes and one says no. And I think this does a really good job of like showing you the, ta the hands look kind of tattooed. Um, I, I love this one. I'm going to put this one at S tier. Gone Girl, this is is a weird moment where I think the actual, the movie book looks kind of better than the original one. I really don't think that it does a great job of explaining what it is, whereas this one looks really good. The only thing I don't love that when you look at this up close, you can see that it's Ben Affleck and I don't like that and that brings it down a little bit, but overall, that's a great book cover. I would read it, I'm putting it at A. Game of Thrones. Um, I do like, that they manipulated the logo ever so slightly to make it better for screen. And I like that they used that one on this and that they have the Iron Throne. I would have rather it had none of the characters in there and just had the Iron Throne, but I think this did a good job of bringing all the elements from the first one onto the movie version, or in this case, TV show version. So I'm actually gonna put this, got the cat joining us. I'm actually gonna put this at A tier as well. All right, this is The Hobbit. I really, really like the cover of the original, and I think this just really looks like it's fanfare for the people that love the movies, and I just don't like this very much. I'm gonna put it at C. Oh my God, Peter! Peter! I do think actually Hunger Games did a really good job. They didn't just plaster Jennifer Lawrence's face on the front of it like a lot of these do. And it still kept the Mockingjay pin as the main focal point. They just made it a little bit cooler, a little bit more CGI. But honestly, like if they took the same font from the original and put it on this one, I wouldn't even notice too much of a difference. I actually might like this one better than the original one. So I think this one to me, deserves a spot in the S tier as well. I, Robot movie and book, I've never seen or read this, but I really like the original cover and I really hate. This just tells me a sign of the times when it came out. Uh, the eye doesn't read really much as an eye. It has Will Smith so big right there. I, I really don't like this one. I'm gonna have to put it at 
Ooh, do I want to put it at JK Rowling or do I want to put it at C tier? I think I might honestly put it at JK Rowling because I don't like this. Okay, Life of Pi, I actually really, really like. I think they did a really good artistic job of recreating the book cover for movie version. And I like the tiger over top of the people. And I honestly think the colors on this represent the colors that are in the movie. It would stand out more on a shelf to me than the original one. So I'm going to put this at A tier. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> they did the same thing as The Hobbit. It's just... They put the main character so big right on the front. I don't like knowing what they look like. It doesn't look like a movie cover, a book cover. It looks like a movie. So I'm going to put this in C as well. Okay, the notebook. What do you want? What do you want? A better book cover. I actually, the original cover is so boring. It's literally just a bad photo of a porch. So I think the movie cover actually in this one does a better job at portraying what the book is going to be about. And also you can like kind of make out that it's who, who the actors are, but not really. So I'm actually going to put this one at B. I don't like either cover. Let me set that record straight. But I do think it did a better job than the original. So I'm, that's why I'm going to put it at B. Okay, this one's called On the Road. I'm not really familiar with this one. It just came up when I was looking at them, but I don't really love the first one. And I actually do like the second one. So I'm going to put this in the same category as the last one where like neither of them are super great, but I actually think the movie one does a better job than the original book one. So I'll put that one at B. Perks of Being a Wallflower. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see here, but the original book was like chartreuse green. And it just had perks of being a wallflower really small at the top. And to me, it kind of evoked the sense of that they kind of didn't fit in at the parties they were going to. And they just felt like they were a wallflower. I think they kind of did a version of the movie cover where they recreated that. But this is the one that I found. And it's not bad, but it does look a lot like a movie cover. And I just don't love it. So I'm gonna put that one at C. Pride and Prejudice. They never really make good covers for these old books. Um, but... The movie version is not good either. I, I don't like putting all these in C, but I honestly think I'm gonna have to put this one at C as well. Okay, this one is called Revolutionary Road and I love the original cover and I hate the movie cover. It's so boring. It looks like it's trying to copy the notebook a little bit and it didn't try at all to like match the style, match the colors, match the font, anything of the first one. So I'm gonna have to put this one at JK Rowling. Okay, Sharp Objects, love, love, love the show. I actually haven't read the book, but I think for me, the original cover is really good. Uh, you can't really see it, but it has a razor and on that razor, it has the author's name. But this one is one of those times that I think having the character on it doesn't do a bad job just because they kind of made it look like, like it's an old painting almost, like with cracks running through it. And I also love the wallpaper choice in the back and the placement of the Sharp Objects logo with the author at the top. I think this one to me might honestly be S tier just because I love how it looks. Okay, this one is called Solaris. I, I'm not really familiar with it. I don't love the old cover, but it looks way cooler than the new one. Again, they're just going for that notebook effect. I don't like this one. I'm gonna have to put this one in C as well. Twilight. I love that they kept the original long L from the book. I don't really know what that stands for or what it means, but I like it. I just think that the original with the hands holding the apple is so iconic and they actually did recreate that in the movie. So I don't know why they couldn't have just taken the shot from the movie and put it on the cover. Instead, they had to do what so many do where they just have all the floating heads all around it. It's like the exact one from the cover. I will say this one has a special place in my heart only because when I was younger in middle school and I read Twilight, the one that I happened to read was the movie cover <laughs> version. So just because of that, I feel like I'm going to have to put it at B just because something about that era of Twilight and that cover just <laughs> makes me nostalgic. But you guys can totally disagree with me if you want to. All right, The Book Thief. I 
recognize this font anywhere. I love the original cover. I've never read it, but I know just the cover made me want to pick it up and read it every time I saw it in the bookstore. The new one, it's bad. It's arguably, it's really bad. The Why did they have to change the font so much? It's just a big picture. It tells me literally nothing about the book and it's not appealing like at all. So I'm actually going to put this one at JK Rowling as well. Okay, we only have one row left. It's a metaphor, see? I want to put The Fall in Our Stars. I actually love the movie cover better. <laughs> they, I'm glad that they kept the original like kind of childish looking chalkboard font. I do like that the original cover had this kind of like black and white speech bubbles. And I think they were supposed to represent the okay, okay theme that goes on throughout the book. But I, something about this cover and this movie poster is very aesthetically appealing. Like they did a really good job at photographing it. And I'm glad that they kept the colors and the font and the same font style there and with John Green's name at the top as well. So I'm gonna have to put this one at S tier as well. For The Great Gatsby. I actually, <laughs> you guys might be surprised with this one, but I actually like both of them a lot. I know that people didn't love the movie and it was very over the top, but I actually really liked it because the style that it was going for, like these people were supposed to be the uber wealthy and they were so gaudy and there was like gold everywhere. And this cover definitely did a good job of like bringing that 20s aesthetic into the modern era. I do wish that the eyes were somehow on it because the eyes are like a big motif that goes throughout it, but I actually love it for what it is. And I'm going to put it at A tier. Okay, Narnia. I actually love the old book cover. The movie cover, not so much. It, they basically just took the main characters from it and put them doing action poses, stylized in a really weird way around it. I'm gonna put this one at C tier. The Martian, again, love the original cover. I actually don't hate the new cover. I think they did a good job of making it artistic and stylized, just like the, the close up of the face, kind of doing what Extremely Loud and Incredibly Close did. They actually took the main actor and made it artistic. So I'm gonna, I don't love it quite as much as S tier ranking, but I am gonna put it at A tier. Okay, The Road, this book was really good. I haven't seen the movie, but the cover just does not, it's like a post-apocalyptic rough novel and the cover does not do it any justice. I'm glad people found this and liked it and I found it, but I actually think I found it because I liked the movie version of the book better and that's the one I read. So I think I'm gonna actually have to put this one also at A tier. Okay, Water for Elephants. I actually started this one and it, it just wasn't for me, but I did watch the movie. I don't think the movie cover does it justice at all of the original one. The original one has just something mysterious about them walking through this dark circus tent. The only thing I do think they did a good job of is like keep maintaining the font, but I don't know why they didn't do the little wavy version of elephants on the movie version as well. I'm actually gonna put this one at C. Maze Runner, I'm kind of, I'm going back and forth with this one. The original one was pretty good. The movie one did a good job of bringing a little more cinematic elements to what the maze looks like. And I also kind of like the font better on the movie one. I don't love that the people are in it, but I feel like you're just inevitably gonna get that from these. So I actually think I'm gonna put this one at B. The one and only Ivan, oops, I accidentally swapped these. So this one on the right is the original. I love it. It looks so cool. And then the Disney, the movie version just looks like a bad documentary. That's what it looks like to me. I don't like it whatsoever. I'm actually gonna put this one at JK Rowling as well. And last, but maybe least, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Last, uh, but not least is Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. Percy Jackson is a beast. You're a beast, man. I read so many of the young adult novels when they were coming out because these were all around when I was in middle school and high school that these were coming out. And I never somehow got around to reading this one, but I didn't like the movie at all. For some reason, it was one of those ones that like every time 
the teacher was gonna put on a movie, this one they put on. So I've seen it like six times and I didn't like it a single time. However, I think the colors and the way he's holding the lightning actually look pretty cool on this. And they're not showing the main actor as like the focal point. They, I mean, they are, but they're not showing his face. They're not doing it for the attention of the actor themselves. So I think I might actually put this one at B as well. Okay, well, that is all 40 something of these movie tie-in book covers that I could find ranked. I think honestly, my favorite of all of these is gonna have to be extremely loud and incredibly close mostly just because I think they did such a good job of translating that book cover and the meaning behind it into the movie version of the book. Close second might honestly be Hunger Games because I like that they included the same symbolism. They just made the cover look a little bit cooler than the original one without actually trying to make it look like it's just an ad for the movie. In terms of worst ones, I love the Annihilation original cover. So that one just seems like such a travesty that they had to put that really horrible one on the movie version. <laughs> same with the Ella Enchanted one. Same with all these in the bottom. They're just all so bad but I think I'm just gonna have to give it to Annihilation just based on looking at the first one, the original versus the movie one. There's just really no comparison. Well, that is it for today's video. If you agree with me, definitely let me know in the comments or if there's some that you really don't agree on, I also wanna hear those and hear your thoughts. Also, I know I definitely did not get to even scratching the surface of some of these. So if you like this video and wanna see more, let me know in the comments which books I missed putting in the tier list and we can definitely put those in another one another time. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get notified whenever I post a new video and I will see you in the next one.